Welcome. Thank you for choosing to listen to another word-filled message by David Entry. Preaching is the means by which God manifests his word and nourishes our spirits. May the life of God enter into you and you as you listen to this message. Be blessed. Hallelujah. We thank God for tonight because this is what you must always understand that God cares for you. Yeah. God cares for you. God cares for you. Yeah. Somebody say, God cares for me. God cares for me. The songwriter said, I have a maker. He calls me his own. Before the world began, my life was in a sense. He knows my name. He knows, he knows my name. He knows my every thought. Come unto me, all ye who labor. Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, 28, 29. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are, he- are heavy laden. The burden is too heavy. Come unto me, all, not some, all. All. That means there's no labor, there's no burden he cannot handle. Every burden can be handled adequately by our God. Come unto me, unto me, that's Jesus speaking. Come to Jesus, all you who labor. If there's no problem, no problem, just just handle your life. But if you know you are laboring, and there is, you are heavy laden. It's a burden on you. And I will give you rest. I see someone have entered your season of rest. Amen. Yes. With regards to your marriage, you have entered your season of rest. Amen. With regards to your career, you have entered the season of rest. Amen. With regards to your health, you have entered your season of rest. With regards to your finances, you have entered your season of rest. With regards to your ministry, you have entered your season of rest. With regards to your family life, you have entered your season of rest. I am prophesying to you. That is why he said, believe in God and believe also in me. If you can believe, then you don't have to trouble because God's power comes through his word. And I am prophesying to you that let not your heart be troubled. I see you entering a season of rest. You are... Uh, how can it be? No problem. The angel, the Mary asked the angel, how can these things be since I know no man? And the angel said, don't, that's not your problem. Just believe it. Just believe it. And I am here to tell you that you are about to enter your season of rest. Amen. You are entering your season of rest. Amen. Some have already entered their season. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. David Entry have entered his season of rest. Why don't you mention your name and confess? Homologia it. Homologia it. That I mention your name that David Entry have entered my season of I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. I have entered my season of rest. Let's say it again. I, I David Entry, I have entered my season of rest. One more time. I, David Entry, I, I have entered my season of rest. Listen, a closed mouth equals to a closed destiny. God can't even save you till you confess. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What you are saying matters to your destiny. Closed mouth means closed destiny. Don't wait for declarations. You have to learn how to also declare, son of man, speak it from your mouth. Son of man. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Not your head, your mouth. What you say, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. So he said, speak, son of man, what sayest thou? What sayest thou? What sayest thou? So it's very important. When he says, I've seen an almond tree and all that, he says that I've touched your lips. God has put his power in the mouth of man. That is why he uses prophets to declare his word so that we can also declare the word that has been declared to us. A declaration that is not repeated will not be a manifestation. You have to say what has been said so you can see what has been said. 
What you say determines what you see. In the realm of the spirit, what you say determines what you see. The fruit, the li life and death are in the power of the tongue. What you say is, is what determines what you see. Jesus could not have died on the cross until he said, into my hands I commit. He had to do it. Other than that, he wouldn't have died. What you say is what you see. So when a pastor says, say it, don't just, just, just say, I agree. No, assent is not enough. Confession is better. That's why we speak about homologia. Just can you imagine the number of negative things you have said today? The weather is bad. I'm not feeling good. I'm upset. I'm hungry. I'm too tired. This thing is not working. Why is this thing so bad? Look at the number of... And when we have come together, the opportunity to say hallelujah, you won't say. When they say, say hallelujah, you won't say. When they say, say thank you, Jesus, you won't say. You are like a spectator watching a movie. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay, it doesn't work like that. It works, you have to be a participator or a partaker. We participate in the flow of God. That's why I taught on Sunday. It's communion. It's partnership. All right? And so this is how you say. You, you, you speak the word. That's called homologia. He said you are not even saved if you believe it without saying it. You, with the heart, man believes. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So you believe unto righteousness. Your believing makes you right before God. Romans chapter um, 10, verse 9 and 10. Your believing makes you right, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness. So your believing sets you right before God. That is why unbelief is, most unbelief is more dangerous than sin. Unbelief is more dangerous than sin. Bible calls, it said, an evil heart of unbelief. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12. An evil heart. Of un unbelief in itself is evil. An evil heart of unbelief. An evil heart. So unbelief is dangerous. Unbelief will cost you your journey with God. Unbelief will cost you whatever God can do. So when God told Mary, you are going to have a child, when the angel came and said it from God, the, the, it couldn't have happened until Mary, the angel managed to convince Mary that with God, nothing shall be impossible. And then Mary then said, I am the handmaiden, be it unto me according to your will. I am God made servant, let it be unto me according to your she agreed that this is possible now so I believe it and I accept it let it be and so believing puts you right before God uh, with the uh, with the heart man believes unto righteousness but you can uh oh you can be right before God and still no manifestation because your mouth is shut your mouth is shut he said with the heart Romans 10:10 10, 10, with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth homologia is made unto salvation until you say it you will not see it until you say it you will not see it one of the reasons why we preach the gospel and we preach the word of God is so that the word of God you have understood will, will, will have residence in your spirit so for you to speak out. He said we have the spirit of faith, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. We have the spirit of faith as it is written. We believe, therefore we speak. Why are you, why are you quiet? Why are you quiet? Close mouth equals to close. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe, therefore, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. You got to speak. Anytime the Holy Spirit came upon people, they spoke. So when the angel announced the birth of Jesus to Mary, Mary was initially thinking naturalistically. In human terms, how is it possible? That's why she said, how is this possible? Since I know no man, how can this be? 
And the angel says, that's not your job. It's the job of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The power of the Most High shall overshadow you. Therefore, that which the Holy One that will be called the Son of God. And then he said, for your cousin Elizabeth, he started giving him testimony. Because Elizabeth has not told anybody. It's not every pregnancy you go around announcing, baby on board, baby on board. So Elizabeth was pregnant, so she couldn't share. It was a miracle pregnancy, so she couldn't share the testimony. It took the angel to share Elizabeth's testimony to Mary. Why? So that Elizabeth's testimony can be Mary's prophecy. Because sometimes you need the evidence of what God is doing on earth to, to make you dare believe that God can do it for you too. Hallelujah. Because if the same God, who if it's the same God, who did it for that sister yesterday, who did it for that brother yesterday, that lady's testimony, she said, I, was, I had a problem with my eye and I, I didn't want to miss the service. I want to see everything clear. So I went back to one of the messages and listened and then when it got to declarations, I tapped it. Oh, come on. It wasn't like I'm waiting for the live one, but the past one is equally potent. She said it's equally potent and viable and it can deliver. And it delivered hands down for her. She laid her hands as I declared, recorded. I declared and she received a miracle. You know, when you hear somebody's testimony that it has happened for them, it's a sign, it's a prophecy that you, oh, oh, you are next in line for a miracle. You are next in line. Shout amen. 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 Non amen shouting believers are not entitled to manifestation declaration. The way you hook to a declaration is your amen. Hallelujah is praise. Amen is, is faith. Hallelujah is a prayer, expression of praise. Amen is your expression of faith. But it must come out of your mouth. You might, you might, if you haven't wearing face marks, you have to still speak. Speak. When you're on the plane, you see uh, flight attendants wearing face marks, but they are speaking. They have to speak because it's part of their job. It's part of their job. They have to speak to customers and passengers. They have to speak. You too, you have to speak to the elements. Speak into your situation. Don't be quiet and silent. Homologia! Speak the word. So we are going to confess. It says that with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The angel gave Mary the testimony of Elizabeth. And after he shared the testimony of Elizabeth, Mary realized what? He said, look at this, the last part. He said, and he who is, and this is the, the sixth month of her, who was called barren. Did you see that? She's already way advanced in pregnancy. Six months. Six gone past 24 weeks. The one who was called barren is already six months pregnant. So you, what is your problem? Oh, Mary said, uh, then the angel added, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Oh, really? Really? Then Mary said, okay, then I believe. I accept. Then she confessed. Mary said, Mary said, Mary said, you can't keep quiet. I keep saying this. Satan has not heard you speaking. That's why he's not stopped harassing you. <laughs> when you speak, things listen, especially when the word of God is in your heart. Say after me, I, David Entry. Mention your name or mention your name. I'm speaking for myself. I'll mention your name. Let's start. We also, I also need a miracle. I also need that breakthrough. I, David Entry, have entered my season of rest. I, David, you one more time. I've entered my era of rest. In Jesus' name. If you believe it, come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. He said, come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So, it doesn't matter how intense the labor is. How intense or heavy the burden is. He didn't qualify what kind of burden, what kind of labor. He said, all, oh, if you are in labor situation, if you are in burdensome situation, heavy burden, heavy laden, he said, come, come to me, and I'll give you rest. Come to me, and I'll give you rest. Then in First Peter chapter 5, verse 7, he said, casting all your cares upon him. Oh, how many of it? Oh. How many? Oh. Don't keep any. Man was not meant to carry cares. Mm -hmm. Some of 
as I, I know some of us have experienced this before in UK, I don't know other parts of the world. And it's actually common in other parts of the world. But in UK too, when you are trying to build the, um, maybe a wardrobe in your house or something, or you, uh, you see, uh, you know, sometimes they are selling these furniture. It's not flat pack and it's clearance stock from DSF. Clearance stock. And you saw it, you liked it. It is about 60% off. And then you buy it. And you try and fit it in your car. Your car was not meant to carry this sofa. <laughs> and then you find a rope and then you tie it around and you are driving it. In. No, that car is not meant to, police can stop you. Or you go to B and Q and you are going to buy a board and the board is two, two meters, 2.4 meters, very long. And your car, it can't fit in it. And now you are, you, are, you, are in, you are in trouble. But if you have a van, Two for a point meter, you can load a lot of it. Load it into the van, load it into the van, load it. Do you know there are some cars that carry cars? Yeah. Yeah. You can't carry a car with your car. It's not meant to be doing that. There are cars that carry, in fact, some of them can carry about 10 cars. Yeah, some lorries. You see the lorry carrying about 10 cars. What? When a bus breaks down on the streets of United Kingdom, there are these tow uh, recovery trucks. They are able to pull these buses and what? Your car can't do that. Now, if you try and use your car to tow the bus, it's going to have a problem. We are not meant to be carrying problems. If you keep carrying problems, you will break down, nervous breakdown, uh, 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 stress, strain. That's because you are, man was not made to carry problems. But Satan has determined that he will, he will make you carry your own problem. So God said, cast all your cares upon him. Cast it upon him. It comes and you pass it on. It comes, why have you, why have you packing it around you? My sister, you don't have a problem. You think you do, but I'm telling you, you don't. It, you see, Stop comparing yourself to others because you are not others. Your case is unique and different. Your testimony is different. You are a man. You are a woman of distinction. A woman, is an, you are, you are ex, a, a, exceptional. Your case is different. And you are the one who's got the X factor. So don't let... All the situations, your problems, and the, the, today this, and today that, and sometimes, yeah, I can understand. Sometimes it's overwhelming. But you know what? Don't go to sleep worrying. Trust God and cast it upon him. When you are going to bed, just throw it. Say, God, I commit to your hand. If you can't handle it, let it not be handled. <laughs> God, if you can't handle it, then let it not be handled. And chill out. Relax. Whilst others are crying, they are going through, you are going through what the same thing they are also going through. They are crying and you are just smiling. Why? It's, it doesn't, it's not denial. No, it's not denial. It's called trust. Trust in God. You, those who know their God, they only end up being strong and doing exploits. So you trust God. You know him. Today, as I read Colossians chapter 2, something jumped out to me. I, I, in fact, I spent more than an hour on that. I, I, yeah, almost about uh, verse 2. All my reading, I spent about an hour on verse 2. Because it was too loaded. I know you are now wondering what is, what is, what is, <laughs> what is there. Yeah. Shall I tell you what I saw? It's, it was too loaded. That their hearts... Um, that their hearts may be encouraged. When you, add, when you read, I think in James, it said comforted. Comforted and encouraged. Same. Comforted is not like, oh, baby, you know, when a child is crying, don't worry, it's okay, it's okay. No, no, that's not comfort here. The comfort here means that you are, you are inspired to be able to say, I'll take on this. I'm going to write a new application. I'm going to face that panel. I'm going. I'm going, I'm going to propose to that girl. I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go. You don't need alcohol. You don't need alcohol to do. You need the Holy Ghost. What alcohol can do, the Holy Ghost can do. Better. 
Go in the power of the Holy Spirit. Anyway, so, <laughs> so the Holy Spirit will comfort you. He, he charges you. Now, he says that their hearts will be comforted, being knit together in love. This, I didn't even spend time on this first two statements because they are powerful. What got my attention is the next one, the third statement. And unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. That one is very loaded. That's what I spent all my time doing today. <laughs> Trying to understand that statement. <laughs> it is so sweet. And unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. What? Unto all riches of the... Give us New King James, please. And attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding. When you have a certain type of understanding, you end up having an assurance. That assurance comes with all kinds of riches. When you have an understanding, after this service, I don't, I, listen, I don't think you have the right to go worrying after this service. No. Why are you worrying? Why? Are you making the word of God of none effect? Why are you worrying? Don't worry. I'm telling you, don't worry. You see, sometimes you worry so much. By the time God does it, you are even ashamed. You're ashamed. Oh, so why am I so? You know, it looked like that, that, that deal didn't go through, that interview didn't go through, and you were so heartbroken. Two months later, you got another opportunity, and you realized that that's what you have always dreamed, more than you have dreamt of for. You've dreamed for. now, and you are happy that that one didn't go through. Some of you who have suffered setbacks in your relationship, sister, I'm talking to you. You wait till you see God, the husband God will give you. And you say, why did I worry myself over this thing? That thing that went. Ah! In fact, you will, you, will, you will try and send a letter and a nice guy card to thank him for waiting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You will thank him. You will thank him. Sometimes you go trying to get a contract or something and... You got so hurt, disappointed. Some bad guy did you, could, wicked man. You just keep thanking God and don't worry. God needs your setback. What is God's setback? To set you up. Wow. Yeah. He just needs it. Just allow God. Allow God. You have been worrying too much. Look at how much you are losing weight. No, I'm not talking about, you know, some weight loss is good, but this one is not good. You know what I'm talking about. Because some weight loss is as a, as a result of pressure on the mind that is beginning to lead towards depression. And until you are depressed, Satan cannot oppress you. So you have to depress you so he can pounce on you. Yeah. So someone is coming. I'm telling you, I'm preaching. Somebody is from today. You have moved out of depressive state in the name of Jesus. You will say amen. 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 Yeah, you are coming out, and you are moved out. So, by the time God does what he said he would do, you look back and you are wondering, wow. So, I do not give you permission to continue worrying after tonight's service. But who are you to tell me you are not? I am a prophet to tell you I am not giving the permission. Yes. <laughs> if you do it, you did it without permission, and you have broken a rule. <laughs> You are not permitted. You don't have the permit. Worrying permit has been revoked. You don't have the permit to worry. Don't worry, my, my darling. My brother, don't worry. God is fighting for you. God is working. Something, there's a better package God is working out for you. Just that, you know, we human beings are limited in our, the scope of what we understand, what we know. And because of the limitation, we actually don't know what is ahead. So we worry and worry and worry and worry. Is it about a wife? Don't worry. God will give you a wife whom you will always, uh, your wife, you would like to spell it with w, two W's because it's so good. Wife. <laughs> Don't worry. A job. Oh, come on. Come on. Haven't you heard people talking about, even just last week and this week, they got in jobs they were not qualified for. Somebody said, for the first time in his entire life, this is the first time he has gotten a, 
a permanent job in his entire life. So that means that things are radically changing on this platform. On this platform. If it has happened for somebody, maybe you have had a permanent job for a long time, now you are looking for a, 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 a big promotion or something, then you two you are about to have the first good news like that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Trust God. And let's keep serving God. I've been young, according to Psalm 37. I've been young, and now I'm old. Never have I seen the, the righteous forsaken. No, he said, beg for bread. Never. Someone shout, never. 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 I taught you on homologia. You have to say it. Someone shout, never. 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 Whilst you are saying never, think about whatever the devil is threatening you with. He's threatening your future with that you, you will see. People will laugh at you. You will see, hey, don't mind. We are going to shout never and never to what the Satan is threatening you that it will never happen. Shout never. 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 I've been young and now I'm old. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed back for bread. So then if you are righteous, you are supposed to have seed. You are supposed to have seed. I'm not talking about offering, please. I'm talking about the seed, the, the children, descendants. So if you are righteous, it comes with the realms of righteousness. So if you are believing God for the fruit of the womb, I'm, I'm happy to announce to you that you are meant to have a seed. A pastor, I don't know, medically it's not possible. Uh, but God, God, godly, godlykally is possible. Yeah. So if medically it's not possible, godlykally is possible. So just use the godlykally roots. There are different, different roots in life. When you go to university, that's why it's called universe. It's one uni, but diversity in unity. So life is diverse. Don't, don't look at somebody's story and say that it is not working. Look at the good things God is doing somewhere and tap into it and know that it's working for you. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. I see God moving you from glory to glory. Amen. I see God moving you from triumph to triumph. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me, let me just get to the text. Today, too, I didn't preach what I wanted to preach. As soon as I took over, I just felt the heaviness in my spirit. Somebody is down. Somebody needs God. Somebody is just desperate, crying out for God. So I, I came in the volumes of the prophetic unction to declare on somebody's life that God has heard your prayer. He knows your name. He sees every each tear that fall. Yeah. And he hears you when you call. In the Colossians chapter um, 2, verse 2, it says that to, uh, uh, um, and attain to, attain to all riches of the full assurance of understanding. The pastor's job is to teach God's word with utterance so someone can understand what God's word is saying. Now, when you understand it and accept it, accept it and understand it, it comes with a certain level of assurance. That I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. You think I'm bothered? No, I'm not bothered. They are looking at you, wanting you to cry, but I'm not bothered. They want you to be stressed. I'm not stressed. I'm, go I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. Why are you not bothered? Because God says it's going to be okay. I'm not you have understanding. You have this assurance of understanding. Full assurance of understanding. So when you are working with God, it's not just based on feeling. Your understanding plays a major role, a vital role in your work with God. If you, you can't enjoy your work with God without understanding God or understanding how God works or understanding the word of God. So progressively, we get to know him little by little, little by little, little by little, little by little. So when you get a, a full understanding, your full understanding comes with riches. You are rich in peace. You are rich in rest. You are rich in not fretting. You are rich in forgiveness. Because you understand the word of God said, you are rich in patience. You, so, it, it, patience is wealth. Forgiveness is wealth. Wisdom is wealth. Um, ability to work hard, being diligent is wealth. Good health is wealth. So all these things, when you understand the word of God and you, you get a certain assurance that comes by understanding, it now moves you into operating in wealth, riches. You are rich because the patience you are exhibiting and you are working in, ordinary people can't work in. 
You couldn't have walked in if you had not heard God's word. If you had not understood that, it's well with you. When you trust God, you understand God's word. You know, this can't be my last chance. This can't be my last chance. Because it is not over until God says it's over. So I call, it doesn't matter what the doctors have just said. No, 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 no. They don't have the final say. See, this kind of peace you will have in spite of what you have heard from the doctors, the peace you will have is a function of understanding, the assurance of understanding. I'm talking about full assurance. What you understand, you have assured. You are certain. It comes with certainty. You have, you have this level of certainty. I think I read it in one of the versions. I believe it's maybe good news. Good news. One of the versions used the, the word certainty of knowing Christ. You have the certainty of knowing Christ. Or I think it is the new international reader's version or something. I read it from as, as many versions. That's why it took me so, much, so long for verse 2. A full assurance, a f assurance of understanding. The certainty that comes through understanding. You are certain. He said, I, ooh. Second Timothy, Kada Baba, chapter 1, verse 12. He says that, for nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For, uh, never, for this reading, has, this reason I suffer all these things. Nevertheless, I'm not For I know, I know, I cut that Baba. Someone say, I know, I know, I know, I know. He said, I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded. Kandala Baba 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 Ketaya. I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded. You, you see, full assurance of understanding. I know whom I believe and I am persuaded. I came here to persuade you on the account of God's faithfulness. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. I came to persuade you on the account of God's faithfulness. Not just his power, but his faithfulness. His faithfulness is attached to his word. So if you can believe his word, you have committed his faithfulness. I came to persuade you. I came to encourage you. I came to charge you. I came to encourage you on the grounds, on the account of God's faithfulness. He said, I know. He said, that's why I go through all these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. Why? Because I know in whom I have believed. He, brothers and sisters, this is a strong one. You can't afford not to have a, an, an understanding of the Jesus you are serving. He said, I know in whom I have believed, and I am persuaded. How? Because of understanding. Understanding, understanding comes with persuasion and assurance. So, it talks about unto the riches of the, uh, unto the riches of the full assurance of understanding. Yeah. Assurance of understanding. The full assurance. Uh, understanding comes with a certain assurance. And that assurance produces riches. When others are crying, you are, you are, you are relaxing. The riches of full understanding. And that's what God is giving you. When there's a situation in the family, you tell mom, don't worry. You tell your wife, my darling, don't worry. You tell your husband, oh, my, 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 my husband, don't worry. You tell your daughters, don't worry, don't worry. This is okay. We'll be fine. But, 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 mom, but, mom, mom, look, but don't worry. God has got us covered. Yesterday I spoke, spoke about God, God, God's got you covered. God has got you covered. When, let's say you're a young lady and you're really working with Christ and your mom is going on and on, or auntie. Hey, so when will you marry? Hey, so when will you, what's you? Look, look. Now, your birthday becomes a day of lamentation for them because it feels like you have grown one year extra. And they are lamenting. And don't tell them, Mom, don't worry. You're worrying too much. But is there, or is there somebody you haven't told? They have to have a feeling. No, you have somebody you don't want to tell them. <laughs> because your level of confidence and your level of peace and certainty seems to suggest there is somebody in your life they are not aware of and you are hiding. No, but there's nobody. Just that you have an understanding. And you have the understanding is giving you a full assurance. So you are operating with a full assurance. That gives you the wealth they don't... They can see, but they don't know. Hallelujah. 
the full assurance of understanding gives certain level of riches. You attain to that riches. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you attain to that riches. Cast your care upon him, for he cares for you. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting your care. Casting, oh sorry, I said your care. I'm very sorry about that. I'm sorry, sorry. I've misinterpreted the Bible. All your care, not all. <laughs> Casting all. Don't leave any. If you leave any, you have, you, have, you have betrayed God. You didn't trust him enough. God said, cast in all your care. And you choose to leave the one for marriage. <laughs> you leave your, your care for marriage. Your care for good health. Your care for doing well in ministry. Your care for um, peace in your family. Your care for your mother's well-being. You leave that. Your care for your child's future. You leave that. You leave that out. What, what can you do about that? What can you, if you could do something about it, wouldn't you, have, wouldn't you have done it already? Cast all your cares upon him. Why should you do that? Because he said, I'm going to take her, yeah. <laughs> for he cares for you. He cares for you, so don't make your care your care. Your care must be his because he cares for you. I'm prophesying, brothers and sisters. The message tonight is don't worry, all right? Don't worry. You'll be okay. Amen. Don't worry. The medical report will come out okay for you. Amen. Don't worry. Don't worry. The diagnostics the report will come in your favor. Amen. The court outcome is about to come turn in your favor. Amen. All right? Don't worry. You have a next appointment with the specialist, with the doctors. Your child has a... Don't worry. That's good then. You are going to prove the goodness of God. Don't worry. Don't worry. Oh, now my, my birthday is next, next month. And I have always said by the time I am 29, I should be ready to marry. By the time I'm 29, I should have my, my first child. And look, nothing. This guy has been in my life for eight years, has wasted everything, now he's gone. Now, no, don't worry, okay? It, and stop beating yourself about the things you've done in the past and the mistakes. Stop beating yourself. Everybody's got issues. Everybody's made mistakes. But what, what was, what's the point in staying on the ground when you fall? Get up. Get up. It's never too late to start afresh. It's never too late to start afresh. It's never too late. The word of God is timeless. So once you hear God's word, it means that it's a new beginning. Once you hear God's word, it's a new beginning. It's never too late. So I came here to tell somebody, God has great plans for you, so don't worry. Okay? Don't worry. I wish you had someone sitting near you for you to tell the person, don't worry. But if there's nobody near you, tap yourself on your shoulder and mention your name and say, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. You'll be okay. Because heaven, heaven will come through for you. Thank you for listening to this message by David Entry. To hear more from David Entry, follow him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can also subscribe to Caris Church on YouTube. Don't forget to share and subscribe to our podcast so you're always up to date. Be blessed.